When you think about it, Jeff Bezos is kind of like Santa Claus. Seriously, think about it. You wish for something, you prove you've been good by being a Prime member, you click the buy button, and in the next 24 hours, you hear your doorbell ring. You go outside, and it's exactly what you wished for with your name on it sitting on your porch. The concept of Santa Claus making deliveries to every kid all in one day using reindeer and a big bag is such an enormous task that it takes kids just a few years to figure out that it's a myth. Oops. However, what Amazon Prime one-day deliveries entail is far more complex and mind-boggling than the bearded man who likes red. And giving people free things. No, not this guy. Ah, yes. Anyway, how does Amazon manage to pull off several of these one-day Santa-like deliveries every single day of the year without stopping? Let's find out. But first, welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. All right, now, the first thing you should know is that your delivery starts even before you make an order. That's right, even before you complete an order, and even before you click the Add to Cart or Buy button, your order has already started moving. This is why this video will be divided into two big parts. What happens before you click for a package, and what happens after you make your demand. So let's dive into BC, before the click. And there's three main things you have to understand. First is that not all packages are delivered by Amazon. Second is the size of the packages vary. And third is that Amazon cannot have every single possible product in every warehouse that they own. These factors determine what products can actually be delivered in one day. And they also influence how Amazon orients its processes to deliver so quickly. The most important factor before a customer clicks is the fact that they can't have all the possible products in a warehouse. And this is where their predictive algorithm comes in. You see, like I said earlier, before you click a button, your delivery has already begun. This is made possible because the company makes use of Amazon Forecast to predict the likely products that are hot in a particular region at a particular time. This process involves the implementation of machine learning on some time series data and other variables to produce accurate forecasts. For instance, as a loose stereotype, on Amazon you could be more likely to find shorts, sunscreen, and apparently socks for tourists in Florida than you'll find in, say, Alaska. Of course, it's more nuanced than that, as Amazon Forecast is as precise as it can be. This tool is used by other companies as well, like More Retail and Swiggy in India, and Axiom Telecom, Omnis, Anaplan, among others. This forecasting process is crucial, and not just in single deliveries, but also in periods of time and culture, as it helped Amazon correctly predict the need for lots of face masks in January of 2020. At this point, you begin to wonder if you have free will. Then again, there's no way the algorithm could predict people going crazy for toilet paper in March of the same year. So, yeah. So the products for specific warehouses are selected and transported accordingly. The products, most of which are provided by Amazon, make their way to the warehouse, which is called the Fulfillment Center, or FC for short. They are taken in at the receiving area, unpacked, and scanned before being staged to the bins of the shelves. Even the staging of the procedures in the shelves is assisted by deep machine learning that pervades all the processes of the warehouse. When the associate at the staging area scans the barcode on the product, the system highlights bins of the shelf with magenta lights, indicating that the product must not go in that bin either for weight distribution reasons or just because there are similar products in that bin and it's not optimal for randomizing the placement process. The rest of the processes in the fulfillment center are just pure poetry with the lines and strategic placement of robots and humans, and the implementation of high-tech, making everything rhyme like a good poem would. After scanning, the warehouse now has an inventory of the millions of products in it and where exactly they are. Making use of Amazon Aurora, an Amazon web service tool, they maintain a flawless relational database to make picking the products easy. And this helps because instead of having a section of different types of goods, they have figured out that it is better to randomize the products as much as possible to make picking faster. So Amazon Aurora and Amazon Neptune help keep track of all this. Now let's move on to the AD of our video, the after-demand processes. This is the things happening after you have made your order. So we have millions of products all arranged randomly into different shelves covering thousands of square feet in the warehouse. How does the exact product you just ordered get out of this mess, into a box, and on your porch in the next 24 hours? First of all, meet Kiva. These guys are the kings of the stowing area, like the ants in an anthill. They are robots designed for the movement of the shelves from the stowing area to the pickers after you click a button. That's right, your order sets these guys in motion. They were created by Mick Mounts, founder of Kiva Systems, which was brought to Amazon for $775 million in 2012, and is now known as Amazon Robotics. 
As a side note, Alibaba Warehouses also uses these types of robots from Quicktron Robotics. In the Amazon FCs, the floors in the stowing area are marked by barcodes. These barcodes are scanned by the Kivas as they move to help them know where they are and where to go. Also, this network of information helps guide the robots on how to move to avoid traffic and collision. Speed up, slow down, the works. The Pegasus, the latest model, can lift over 1,200 pounds and move at a comfortable walking speed of 3 miles per hour. This has helped increase the holding capacity of the warehouses by 50%, as well as making the retrieval of these products three times faster. Overall, this makes the fulfillment cost for products as low as 40% its initial cost. And more importantly, the pickers don't have to walk up to 12 miles per shift in warehouses that are as large as 10 to 20 football fields. Nowadays, they're balling. And if a product falls off a shelf in the stowing area, the system alerts the control center so that an authorized associate is sent into the area. The associate wears a vest that emits a radio pulse and creates a path so that all the kivas avoid that route until the associate has found the product, picks it up, and leaves the stowing area. What's more, the robots also use machine learning so that when a product seems to be hot and people keep ordering, they stay closer to the areas that the system has identified more of those products to be present. The robots charge themselves when low and know how to orient the shelves for the picking to be easy for the associate. It's very organized and routine so that the workers are ironically like robots themselves. But it's beautiful to watch, if you're not the one doing it. After being packed and dropped into totes, the products are sorted from the totes into respective packages at the packing area. And even packaging is automated, as the size of the box, length of tape, protective material, and barcode label are all decided by, wait for it, machine learning. From there, the box moves to the slam machine, where your name and address are added, and the best logistics for your package is selected using, wait for it, machine learning. Slam actually stands for scan, label, apply, and manifest. The package is sent to a sortation center where it's picked up for last mile delivery. The Amazon trucks and Amazon flex drivers are guided to your house using here maps and navigation systems instead of Google Maps or Apple Maps. Ha, ah, thank God for that. Sometimes, deliveries can be tedious for the drivers and there have been complaints every now and then. In fact, some of you in the comments will also probably say similar things. Apparently, despite all the deep learning, Amazon cannot predict what's needed by their workers. To be honest, it's quite difficult to run the human side of anything perfectly. Because the fact is, when you make a one-day order, Amazon is committed to fulfilling that order. So you're not exactly innocent. However, there are plans for introducing technology that will give this a more humane feel, ironically, by eliminating the humans. Exactly what robots have always been feared for. The biggest example is the approval by the FAA for drone test runs that will deliver packages under 5 pounds to customers. This will make the reality of 30-minute deliveries the new normal, as this weight class makes up the bulk of Amazon deliveries. Who knows? Maybe in the future, kids will think that the Amazon rainforest was named after the company. This level of clout is only possible because Amazon utilizes the wealth of resources from its other sectors like Amazon Web Services, its robotics, and its logistics to slowly beat its commerce competitors like Walmart, Best Buy, and Target. From the little online website for purchasing books, Amazon has become one of the all-time best sellers of products in the world, not just New York. And their complex delivery system is just one example of proper implementation of 21st century tech and innovation to provide the best possible services to people. Do you think they'll edge out the likes of Walmart as the undisputed online retailer? Or do you think that is far-fetched? What do you think of the delivery drones? And also, what do you want for Christmas this year? Let us know in the comments below. Mr. Bezos reads them. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And check out more awesome ones in the Simply Tech channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.